Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Barry Connected podcast, where we share on all kinds of topics related to bariatric surgery. And today I am being joined by the beautiful, amazing, incredible Jen Clayton. Say hello, Jen. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I met Jen, gosh, several, we've, we've kind of been together at several different places, conferences. Yeah. Um, obesity help. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, and this one. Bariatric Society. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> and is there anything else? Maybe any other places? I don't think I think those are the main two that we've connected at uh, several times. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you being willing to come on. I had to have Jen come on and talk because she is just a wealth of information. She has her own private coaching that she does on the side here, I should say full time. And um, basically she's a, a weight loss nutrition coach, has lost 140 pounds and, and maintained that. And she shares openly about food, nutrition, fitness, mental health on Instagram, YouTube, and a private Facebook group. And today we're going to be talking about uh, macros and calories for sustainable weight loss. We're going to be talking about how Jen kind of figures these for herself and helps other people do that as well. So I get this question a lot, like on these calls and stuff, like how many macros, what do we do? You know, all of that type of thing. So Jen, I'm going to be turning it over to you. But before I do, I just want to say welcome to every single person that's joining us either on the live or the replay. Um, we love all of you. We welcome all of you. Let us know where you're from. Let us know a little bit about you, if you'd like, if you've had bariatric surgery. I see several people joining already, and I just want to say hello. We have people from all over. It looks like we have um, Massachusetts, Florida, Oklahoma, Marion, Illinois, Seattle, Washington, Iowa. So at that, I want to say hi to each and every single one of you. And Jen, I'm going to be muting myself because I'm going to go... Um, check our Facebook page while we're we're okay. we're going, and I want you to tell us tell everybody a little bit more in depth about yourself and what you do. Sure. So, uh, like Brenda said, I've lost and maintained 140 pound weight loss. I've been maintaining my weight now for just about a year. I actually started heavily into my weight loss journey at the beginning of 2022 after being over 300 pounds for a big portion of my life and being miserable and my knees hurting and being embarrassed to go out in public. I had gotten to the point where I saw a photo of myself from an anniversary trip with my husband in November of 2021 and said, that's it. I have to do something before I go through menopause. I'm 48. So I'm in perimenopause. I knew that was coming. And I didn't want to go through that stage of my life being 300 pounds. So at the beginning of 2022, I started counting calories and protein. And that's all I focused on for the full year of 2022 and lost 90 pounds in that one year and then continued my weight loss into 2023 lost the majority of my weight by the first part of the year and then maintained that weight loss ever since. And now I'm at the stage where I'm in maintenance, but I'm also in body recomp. So I am a big hiker. I work out six days a week. I'm very, very active. I'm constantly pushing myself in the fitness realm so that I can become healthier, stronger, and leaner. Never wanted to be skinny, just wanted to be healthy and strong. And now that I'm venturing more into fitness, I'm a little more focused on carbs and fats, but I still heavily rely on being in a calorie deficit and eating enough protein because that's what got me to lose my weight and maintain that weight loss. And I did get my nutrition certification almost three years ago, and I've been a weight loss and nutrition coach since it's my full-time job. Um, I'm also a full-time content creator on YouTube, which has also been my full-time job for about three years now. So I'm heavily active on social media. I know Brenda has all my information, but that is my job. That's what I do to support my family. And it also keeps me accountable on my weight loss journey as well. So I'm, I, I just feel like this is going to be a great topic. Um, guys, if anybody has questions as we're going through this, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box or um, in the chat feature, whether wherever you're at. If you're on the replay, you can also just post questions. We'll try to come back and, and check those out. Um, let's see. Okay, now 
we can include this in your talk, but Enid is asking, what did you do when you plateaued? So that may be part of what you're going to be yeah. talking about, but. Yeah. So one thing about a plateau that is a big misconception is just because you don't lose weight for a week or two weeks doesn't mean you're on a plateau. Typically to be considered a plateau, you would maintain your weight. That means no weight fluctuation. You literally get on the scale once a week and it's the same and it should be for at least two to three months before it's considered a plateau. Weight fluctuation is normal. So your weight is going to go up. Your weight's going to go down. I can, um, I ran a 10 K a couple weeks ago. I was up four pounds on the scale the next day. And I said, huh, interesting and moved on because I knew that it was a fluctuation from the run. My body was sore. And within a couple of days, I'm right back to normal. So if you feel like you're in a plateau, you have to make sure that you're truly in a plateau. So we're talking two months of not changing your weight at all. And if that's the case, then we need to change something up, whether it's your diet or your exercise. Maybe you're not eating enough protein, drinking enough water. Maybe you're not supplementing post-workout. I mean, there could be multiple things that can lead to a plateau. I've personally never been in a plateau because I lost my weight and then maintained my weight ever since. And I will say my weight fluctuates. Maintenance is not a number, it's a range. So I give myself a five pound window. And I stay within that five pound window. If I go out, I rein it in and I start tracking again. I typically don't track my food every day. So if I do go out of my window, I start tracking again because I'm never going to gain my weight back. That's a promise I made to myself. And whatever I have to do to maintain that weight loss is, is what I'm going to focus on. Okay. So that's, a, that's, a, that's a great way to kind of look at it too, giving yourself a little window. And, um, I'm like really excited to get started. There is some more questions coming in. Do you want to, um, do you want to get started or do you want to take a couple questions or do you, what do you prefer doing? Cause some You're of right. these might be answered. It's, yeah. it's totally up to you. Yeah. Well, let's get started. And if I don't answer them, then I'll answer them for them. Okay. Okay. So guys, we're going to be pausing in between. And I see that there's, there's at least three or four questions already here. We will work those into the conversation as we go. Okay. I promise you. Okay. Go right ahead, Jen. <laughs> okay. So what I really wanted to focus on today was explaining what I feel like is the most effective and sustainable way to lose weight, whether you had bariatric surgery or not really focusing on being in a calorie deficit and eating enough protein is truly the most efficient way to lose weight and keep it off long term. And what you have to remember is there's a big difference between weight loss and fat loss. So weight loss is going to be the loss of fat, lean muscle and water and fat loss is the loss of fat. So your goal should be fat loss. You're going to lose water weight naturally, but you want to maintain your lean muscle. And the only way to maintain lean muscle, number one is to eat enough calories. And number two is to eat enough protein. And this is whether you work out or not. So when I started my weight loss journey, I'm like, I'm just going to put myself in a deficit and I'm going to eat enough protein every day. And that's literally all you have to do to lose weight. And like I said, once you have fitness goals, that's when carbs and fats come into play. And if you didn't know what macros are, macronutrients are carbs, fats, and protein. And yes, you need to eat all of them. We don't restrict or eliminate any food or food groups at all. We eat everything. And if you're active, you need more carbohydrates than the average person. And you also kind of have to learn your body. What does your body like? My body likes high carb, high protein, moderate fat. That's what works best for my body. If I reduce my carbs, I have no energy. I don't make it through my workouts. I'm not recovering the way that I should. And I feel kind of sluggish throughout the day. And when I figured out that my body likes carbs and up my carbohydrate intake, that's when I saw the most success. So you do have to kind of figure out your body, which means you have to know your macros and calories. And I'll tell you that there is zero calculators in the world online that will give you accurate numbers. And I also promise you that if you go put your macros, your information into five calculators, you're going to get five different answers. So that's where you need to have your personalized macros and calories done. That's what I do. That's what I do as a weight loss and nutrition coach. I actually looked today before our call and I have calculated over 2,500 people's macros and calories over the last three years. I have clients that have lost hundred pounds. I have clients that have lost 200 pounds and they're eating more than they ever ate before. And they're eating for their body. So you have to make sure that you know your personalized macros and calories, not some random number that a calculator online gives you. It's just very basic information. I ask very direct information to get the right information for you to reach your goals. And that's what I did for myself. I figured my own. 
What kind of questions might you ask just out of curiosity? So really what you need to know, I mean, the basic questions are going to be, how old are you? What's your age? What's your current weight? What's your goal weight? And what's your activity level? Those are the top five questions that any calculator is going to ask. I actually have 14 questions on my questionnaire. So I'm going to deep dive more into what types of medical issues you have. What types of medications do you take? What exactly is involved in your fitness routine? Because different fitness routines require different macronutrients, whether you're lifting weights, not lifting weights. If you're a cardio queen, you're going to need more car carbs than someone who lifts more weight. So it's really just deep diving into each person individually to figure out their information. Okay. Jen, I'm going to go ahead and paste your, um, your nutri coaching and nutrition website just here in case anybody jumps off early. That way, at least they have that. And I'll be posting all of your uh, Jen's other information, like her Instagram page and all that. I'll post that here separately too, as well. Um, but yeah, just keep going. Okay. So I know that you wanted to know what macros were, how I calculate, what other pieces did you specifically want me to touch on? Um, you know, like whenever you're, whenever you're figuring macros for someone, um, do you specifically typically work one-on-one -on -one with them or do you work in, in, in coaching or how do they go about doing this? Is it possible for them just to do it on their own? Like what are the, yes, so steps? there's two separate services. So there's personalized macros and calories, right? That's the first thing you need to do, right? You need to know what you should be eating every day to lose weight. So that is all done through email. So you pay for the service, I send you a questionnaire, you answer the questionnaire, I send you your macros. Now I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's a 30 minute session. A lot of people will purchase their macros and calories and then they'll wanna discuss them. They'll wanna know exactly how to get started. What are my tips and tricks for getting in protein? And I will tell you that I do have specific protein related content on my YouTube channel. How I reach my protein goal every day, what protein supplements I take, all of that is on my YouTube channel as well. But some people will get the macros and calories and go, well, now I have 25 million questions. So I'm going to book a coaching session to go over it with her. And then I basically get you completely set up to start following those. And then I recommend checking back in with me after about four to six weeks, because you're going to have questions again, and you're going to have data from following those macros and calories that we can discuss what's working, what's not. So I think having the accountability of a coach is great. It doesn't mean that you have to talk to someone once a week, but I mean, every couple of weeks, once a month, just to have that check-in point, it keeps you accountable and it's a great way to get your questions answered so that you can be most effective with the information I provide in the macros and calories. You know, Jen, I think you got a great point there because I know for myself, like that accountability piece is mm. so big. I recently, for some of these people who have probably been on our calls um, recently know, but I have recently within the last three weeks started a working with a fitness coach one-on-one -on -one for four days a week. And it's been incredible. And like we've went over the nutrition, some of the nutrition that they recommend, mm -hmm. but just having that accountability of having somebody there and somebody to talk to is it's so helpful. So like being in these groups and doing these kind of things, it is helpful because people are going through the same things. They understand they can help answer questions. It keeps you on track. Like if mm -hmm. you know, you got to meet somebody at a certain yeah. place at a certain time, you're going to try to be there. <laughs> yeah. We actually just had that discussion this morning. I do attend a boot camp group. I live in Arizona. So we work out outside year round um, at a park in our community. I live in a master plan community and we have what's called Rancho Boot Camp. Our community is called Rancho. And I've been going since October of 2022 to this boot camp group. And we go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I'll tell you if someone doesn't show up, we're all like, where were you? I mean, it's the accountability. Like, are you okay? Cause you weren't there. And having that accountability in that group setting also for me, moving from Washington to Arizona and knowing zero people other than my in-laws, that group has now become my best friends. I, we just hung out Saturday together. There are several girls I've become attached to. They're great accountability partners. It's great for you to have someone to, that's like-minded for you to have conversations about nutrition and fitness. And my boot camp group and I, um, one of the big NSVs for me after losing so much weight is there is, and you can look this up and you'll be like, I'm never doing that. There is a mountain in Arizona called Picachu Peak and it is rated extremely difficult. You literally pull your yourself up by cables 
Um, and it was on my bucket list. I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so actually in January of this year, I did it. I climbed that mountain, made it to the top, made it down, took eight hours. It was the hardest thing physically I've ever done in my life, but it was with my group of friends, my workout group, so that we had that accountability to go together. And those are just all things that I've benefited from, from weight loss. Aside from aesthetic reasons, that's not what's important. It's the health reasons and all the things like running my first ever 10K two weeks ago in San Diego. Those are all things that matter way more to me than any number on the scale. And that all comes from healing my relationship with food while I lost weight. That's a big thing is to heal that relationship so you can keep the weight off long term. So we the 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 physical activity part probably does definitely play into it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it 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 makes a difference. It looks like um let's pause for one second. Um it looks like somebody says or Enid says, thank you. She oh, appreciates us. <laughs> we, we, I love Enid. Um, this live couldn't come at a better time. Good job, Jen. And Amber says, Jen, did you have any issues with loose skin? Yes, I did. Actually, I carried a lot of my weight and you can see all this on my Instagram. I have a lot of before and after. And I also have a Facebook group. It's free to join. There's about 30,000 people in there. And I do post pretty regularly in there about transformation photos, but I carried a lot of weight in my back. So I have always had smaller arms, smaller legs. I carried all my weight here, but for some reason it likes to accumulate in my back, especially my lower back. So when I lost all my weight, I had all of this loose skin on my back. And what was happening is when I was working out, it was flapping around. So it just was not comfortable. Even if I wore a long line sports bra, it was awful. I also have quite a bit of loose skin on my inner thighs. I have some loose skin on my stomach and then my breast area was awful as well from losing so much weight. So in May of last year, I had cosmetic surgery um, with my really good friend, Amy, who lost hundred pounds as well. She had a 360 tummy tuck. I had a back lift and extended breast lift and implants in Tijuana, Mexico in May of last year. Best decision I ever made because I was able to get rid of all the skin on my back. So now when I work out, nothing's flapping around. I did not do anything with my stomach or my thighs. Uh, the recovery time on a thigh lift is too long for me. I don't want to go six months without working out. So I opted to just live with it. And when I wear compression leggings, you don't, I don't notice it for me. It was function, not aesthetic, but I will tell you removing the skin on my back, correcting my breast area was the best decision I ever made. I just feel better and more confident. And I see all my hard work more with the skin removal, but I still have loose skin. It's going to happen, but I'd rather have loose skin than weigh 140 pounds more. So I just, you know, one less they're Yeah. Evil. When people say that, like they, they're worried, like I, the program that I worked for before I worked with a lot of bariatric surgeons, our patients before they had bariatric surgery. And that was one of the biggest reasons yes. that they would say, yes. you know, before surgery, I don't want to lose this weight and have all this loose skin. But, you know, to me, I'm kind of with you. Like if you lose weight, you're losing weight. And like, just think about how you feel overall with that right? oh, loose skin yes. doesn't affect your health weight affects your health loose skin is strictly aesthetic and I look at it truly like a battle scar for all the poor decisions I made my whole life that got me to 325 pounds now that's what I have that's my battle scar from that those choices I made and I will tell you when I was in my mid-20s I lost 125 pounds on Weight Watchers, but that was from major calorie restriction. And it just wasn't sustainable for me. And within two years, I had gained it all back. And this time around, my whole lifestyle is very different. I'm eating between 2,500 and 3,000 calories a day now, maintaining my weight because I have fixed my metabolism this time, not damaged it more by not eating enough. You truly have to eat more to lose weight, not less. Diet culture has told us less. No, it's more. Even if you're bariatric, you should not be eating 1200 calories for the rest of your life. It should be growing as you get further out from surgery because you need to keep your lean muscle and keep your metabolism going in order to- And I think those weight. two things are huge, huge. huge. Somebody asked, um, do you watch sugar intake? No, I do not watch my sugar intake. I am a big sweets eater. So I will tell you full transparency. I eat dessert every day. I have my entire weight loss journey. I just work it into my macros. I make sure that I say for me, I'm a, oh, it's after dinner and I'm watching TV and I need a snack kind of girl. So I always save calories for that. So I actually just made protein pudding before this call 
so that I can have that for dessert tonight. So I need something sweet. So I just work it into my day. That's part of making it sustainable. If you said, Jen, you can never eat dessert again, that's never going to work for me. That's not going to be sustainable for me. And then I'm going to binge because restriction is the number one cause of binge eating. So I'm not going to restrict anything so that I can binge on it later. I'm just going to eat what I want. And I do eat dessert every day. I eat cookies, I eat cake. I mean, I eat it all. I just work it into my day. So that, I think you got to, that's a big point right there. Like the being able for it to be sustainable long-term, like on one of our groups, we have a very connected Facebook group and somebody recently just posted something about, I have had some regain, what do I do? And I think the biggest thing, there was like lots of suggestions that were coming in from that. But I think too, you have to take into so many factors. It's not just, um, it is not just, you know, restrict yourself with calories and like mm -hmm. focus on, it's not just about focusing on um, the, maybe the major macros. It may not just be that. It may be like developing some fitness. Like you have to take yourself individually and look at your whole lifestyle. And it has to be something you can do long-term because if you lose the regain that you had, you're going to just do the same thing if you haven't developed some lifestyle changes, patterns, whatever. So, and, and maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's not just, um, everybody's different. It could be, you know, you're talking about hormones. It could be, yeah. um, it could be if somebody had weight loss surgery, it might be their surgery. So that just a lot of different things. And there's, there's somebody else here that says, um, how do you determine macro? So I think you kind of mentioned this a little yeah. bit. Yeah, the questionnaire is sent out and I actually hand calculate macros. I don't use any type of calculator. When I became a weight loss and nutrition coach, I was every year we have to renew our certification. So I do have to pay and like recertify every year. We were given a calculation to do specific to an individual. And that's what I've used from day one. That's what I did on myself. I actually recalculate my macros pretty regularly because as I lose fat and gain muscle, I need more food. And the another misconception with people, and this is something literally every coaching call, I'm not even kidding, I get from people. It's like, so after I lose my weight, my calories go down, right? No, actually your calories go up. As you lose weight, you should be eating more because what you're trying to do is bridge that gap from a deficit to maintenance right? And maintenance is going to be several hundred, if not a thousand calories more than you're eating now. So you don't want to be at 1500 and then you lose 20 pounds and go to 1400. You actually should be upping your calories as you're losing weight to get closer to that maintenance number. So that's why I offer macro recalculation after you've lost about 20 pounds, we need to recalculate that so we can give you more food so we can bridge that gap because truthfully, you've got to get to maintenance in order to keep your weight off. And weight loss is hard. Nobody wants to go through all that to gain it all back. So you've got to do what you have to do along the way to keep it off long-term. And you have to eat more to lose weight, not less. That's really said. Um, somebody asked, how do you know if you have lost fat versus muscle? So body composition, right? So when, like me and Brenda, we can be the same height and weigh exactly the same pounds. We can both be 5'8 and 180 pounds, right? But if I have less fat and more muscle, even though me and Brenda weigh the same, I'm going to look drastically different than Brenda does. Brenda may have more fat than me. So she's going to be larger in stature because a pound of fat is this big and a pound of muscle is this big. They weigh exactly the same. Muscle does not weigh less than fat. Don't ever let people, or more than fat. People like, oh, muscle weighs more than fat. No, it doesn't. A pound's a pound. Pound of sugar, pound of flour, pound of muscle. It's all a pound. But because muscle is more dense, it takes up less space in your body. So I will tell you full transparency. And everybody's going to be like, no way. <laughs> I am 5'8". I weigh between 185 and 190 pounds. That is a sustainable weight loss for me, a weight for me, because I have a lot of lean muscle. So I can't go by the scale because I'm overweight on the BMI chart by 25 pounds on the high end, but for my body, because I've lost fat and built muscle and I'm in fat loss mode, I'm going to weigh more on the scale because that muscle is going to keep building. And to be honest, I sometimes even gain weight on the scale, but lose fat because I'm gaining muscle. So how you'll know is how your body looks. Are you flabby? Are you what's called skinny fat? If you're skinny fat, you means you've lost a lot of weight but not necessarily re kept that lean muscle that you need. And remember, lean muscle burns calories at rest. And also lean muscle allows you to fuel your metabolism, which will help you keep the weight off. 
that's why building lean muscle and maintaining lean muscle is so important while you lose fat. Okay. Um, now this is a question. Um, somebody says, how would you determine who is financially challenged to, to do this? How would you, how would somebody who is financially challenged do this? I guess they're talking about maybe your services. Macros, services? Oh, okay. So yeah. I'll tell you that macros and calories is $50 and a one-on-one -on -one coach coaching session is $55. I will tell you the $50, which is not a lot of money this day and age is worth the investment in yourself because I'm telling you from personal experience, it will change your life. Knowing exactly what you need to eat every day. And really you don't have to play macro Tetris. You just need to be in a calorie deficit and eat enough protein. That's it. That's all you have to do. And knowing those numbers will change your life. And it's $50. I mean, I spend $50 eating out with my husband. So, I mean, I would rather invest the $50 in myself. I will also tell you that I do offer discounts every once in a while on my website, like for Black Friday, we did a little Mother's Day sale. So there, I do offer sales, but it is only $50. So it's not hundreds of dollars for the macros or the coaching. Very reasonably priced. I feel like it is because like you can't hardly go anywhere less than $100, like for no. a visit or for anything. Um I will, I, I do want to ask you this. So um, this person is saying, do you have to calculate macros differently for clients who have had bariatric surgery yes. than somebody who's not? Yes, because you cannot eat as much per meal. So I can say you need to eat six meals a day and eat all of these calories. And you're like, I don't, I need like 10 meals a day to get that in. So yes, I have a lot of bariatric clients. I would say 25% of my clients are bariatric. So yes, I am very, we are very, it's more, more meals throughout the day, smaller quantities. So you can still get in your calories, still get in your protein. And of course, your calories are going to be different than someone who's not had bariatric surgery. It would be almost impossible to eat 3000 calories a day unless you're eating a bunch of junk food. So yes, it, it is very tailored. It's very specific to the individual. And I have people that are in their 60s and 70s. They need less calories. The older you get, the less calories you need. So I need to make sure that it's personalized to each individual person. So yes, absolutely. Yeah, because I know this, like I said, this nutrition person that I'm working with isn't familiar with bariatric surgery and she's amazing, but- like she had me on so much food. I was like, I just want to tell you, like, I'm only able to do it half. I'm <laughs> only able to do half of what you have. I'm like trying very hard. But that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kelly says, how do you, how do you heal your relationship with food? By not restricting, not labeling food as bad or good, allowing yourself to eat your favorite foods in moderation. I say, and I follow this myself, 80-20. 80% of the time you're on track, right? You're eating the foods that are considered to be healthy. No food is bad or good. Some foods are just healthier than others. I mean, you're going to get less cupcakes than you get broccoli, right? You can still eat the cupcakes. You just get less of them than you do broccoli. So 80% of the time you're on track, 20% of the time you're enjoying fun foods. You're going to birthday parties. You're having a margarita with your friends. I had a client, a coaching call this morning, and she said, this is the first time in my adult life that I ate French fries and didn't feel guilty about it. And I said, nobody got that because they ate French fries. Not a single person, right? That's not how it works. It's what you do 80% of the time. And like I told you, I eat dessert every day. My husband and I go out to dinner every week. I don't track my food. I order what I want on the menu. It's That's what keeps it sustainable. And if you do something sustainable, your relationship with food will naturally get better because you stop labeling as it, it as bad as good. And you stop saying, well, I can't eat that. And I can't eat that. Yes, you can. You just get less of it, but you can certainly eat it. So that's what I did even throughout my whole journey is really checked in with myself when I was like, oh, I'm so terrible because I had pizza for dinner. I'm not bad because I had pizza and you're not good because you had salad. There's no moral value on food. So you have to take that out of the equation so that you can start healing your relationship with food and just know that it's fuel. It's not bad or good. It's just food. Okay. We have any workout suggestions for someone who has, who is bone on bone in both knees. Um, I, this person says I need to lose 225 pounds to be able to get them replaced. I'm hoping to have weight loss surgery soon. I can't find an affordable place to use a pool where I live. So that's not a good option. I'm concerned about movement after surgery. So what I would recommend if you have issues with your knees is you can do chair exercises. So you can go onto YouTube and search chair exercises for beginners. You can also do upper body movements. 
your if your knees are your issue, you can use the rest of your body that's not an issue, right? So you could do light strength training. You could even do things like arm circles to like move. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do to burn calories and exercise that don't put any pressure on your knees. And I will tell you, as you lose weight, if, if you didn't know this, this is kind of a fun fact, for every pound of weight that you lose, it takes four pounds off of your knees. So if you lose 10 pounds, it takes 40 pounds of pressure off of your knees. So as you lose weight, your knee issues can sometimes heal themselves and it can be a little bit easier to move your body, but you got to work with what you got to work with. So if that means just upper body, or maybe you could ride a stationary bike at a little bit low, slower pace with less intensity. I mean, there's things that you can do. You just can't use it as a reason not to move your body because a body in motion stays in motion, yeah. a body at rest stays at rest, right? So you've got to move however you can, you can move. I was 325 pounds. I mean, I wasn't doing a whole lot back in the day either, but I would walk or I would go to the pool, or I would ride a station. I would find a way to at least move my body until I was able to do more. And one suggestion too, you kind of, you kind of hit on is, you know, if you have a hard time deciding what that might look like, as far as the body, like there's a lot of inexpensive ways to go about it. Like you said, YouTube and all that, yeah. but also if you get an order from your doctor, like maybe it's the, the surgeon who said that you needed your knees replaced some type of referral to a physical therapist. Yeah. A lot of times those may even be covered by insurance yes. to be able to have somebody help you with figuring out what kind of physical activity you can do, or maybe working with you. So great mm -hmm. suggestion there. Um, Jen, is it okay? Do you want to keep going? We have lots of more questions. Okay. Okay. Great. Discuss it. So yeah. Um, let's questions. I want to make sure I hit this one on Facebook. Um, Amanda says, how do you balance building muscle with continuing to lose weight? I think you may have answered that one or did I? So here's the thing about building muscle and losing weight. Remember, there's a difference between weight loss and fat loss. I will tell you that if you want to strength train and you want to build muscle, the scale is not going to be your friend because what you have to remember about the scale is it measures mass. It doesn't know what the mass is made up of. It doesn't know if it's fat, water, you need to go to the bathroom. It's muscle. The scale doesn't know. It's just a box that gives you a number. So if you want to continue to lose fat and build muscle, you can't solely rely on the number on the scale. What I would highly recommend that you do is take your measurements once a month. And as women, and when we're in fat loss mode, there's only three measurements we need to worry about. That's our chest, our smallest part of our waist and the widest part of your hips. So take those three measurements and then take pictures. I actually just posted a picture and a video that I did where I weighed one pound difference in the two photos, but I am drastically smaller in this photo because I had fat loss that was replaced by muscle. So take pictures, put on a sports bra and underwear. I know it's not fun, but take the pictures, wear the same sports bra and underwear every time and take your pictures once a month. Do a full picture from the front, from the back and go side to side. And if you are actually building lean muscle and losing fat, the scale may not change, but those pictures and those measurements, you're going to be shocked. I lose inches every month and my weight does not change. Zero, zero change on the scale. Sometimes I'll be up on the scale, but I'll lose inches. And that's because again, I'm replacing any fat with lean muscle. So the scale says, yeah, you're the same, but your body's going to be very different. And that's really the goal. The goal is fat loss, not weight loss. That should be the goal. Okay. Um, somebody is asking, where do we sign up? I'm assuming Enid is asking about your website coaching. Yeah, I know Jen, I'll post that once again too yeah. for them. It's Jen with two ends, platenutrition.com. And it is on my Facebook group, Instagram, all that. So, it, or you can message me directly, just DM me and I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, I'll post these one more time, your information. Um, let's see, let's go to the next question. Count mac let's see, count macros, but with a calorie deficit question mark. Meaning, I guess they're wanting to know how to do that. And also I have a question too. Like if you're giving somebody a macros plan and it's to lose weight, mm -hmm. what happens whenever they get to their maintenance weight? Would they need to come back to you? Yes. Yes. So what I recommend is if you are in weight loss mode, have your macros done. Once you've lost between 15 and 20 pounds. If you have more weight to lose, you can go closer to the 20 pound mark. If you have less weight to lose, stick around the 15. 
or if your activity drastically changes, right? So you go from sedentary to working out six days a week, or you work out six days a week to sedentary, you need to have your macros redone. And then from there, when you get to maintenance, like I am, then you need to have them redone for maintenance. And then what I did is took them from maintenance to body recomp. So now I want to maintain my weight, but I want to build muscle. So now those macros are going to look different than the maintenance. So it isn't just a one and done. You have to have them redone throughout the process. Um, so, and I do offer a discount on macro recalculation from one-time macros. So it is a little bit cheaper to have me redo them throughout the, the process. But yes, you want to do that. You want it to be accurate so you can continue to reach your goals. Okay. And Heather says, do you... Does your nutrition plans accommodate medical conditions such as hypothyroidism and PCOS? So macros and calories, yes. They will take, that is one of the questions. Do you have any health-related issues that can prevent weight loss? And that's where you would answer that question. Uh, perimenopause, menopause, PCOS, all of that, that is taken into account when your macros are done. And with your macros, I don't just give you numbers like, here you go, bye. I actually give you food suggestions, serving size suggestions. It's all part of the macros. It's a big, long email with all the information you need to get started. And that's typically enough to get you started. And then if you have questions, that's where coaching would come in because macros are just macros and calories. It's not a, it's not a coaching session. They're separate services. So, so question about, um, comes in about, does your coaching packages include the macro calorie calculation or is that bought separate? They're separate. They're separate services, but what you can do is add both of them to your cart and check out at the same time. And then I can do your macros and calories and get you on my schedule for a coaching call. Because usually I'm about a couple of weeks out with, I'm, I'm like, this is my full-time job. So I have a lot of clients. So I would purchase them together so I can get you on my schedule so that you can have a follow-up call rather quickly. Got you. Okay. And is it beneficial to get a scale that can do those measurements? Like your body fat measurements? I'm almost wondering if she's meaning like, yes, like, you know how some scales will yes. calculate. Um, I know my scale will. It's in Iveta, I-V-E-T-I or something like that. Anyways, mm -hmm. it'll calculate certain calculations. Now, is it accurate? No, probably not. not 100%. No, <laughs> no. it's not. No. Now, it's not inaccurate, but it's also not accurate. Right. And here's the no. thing about the scale is the weight when it's like, oh, you're you need to lose weight. It's calculating that off of the BMI chart. And I always say, if you follow my videos, I always say the BMI chart. We don't know her because it's it's archaic. It's out of date. I am overweight on the BMI chart. And in order for me to get to that weight, which I'm not interested in, I would have to lose muscle. So those scales are going to tell you, oh, you're overweight. You need to lose weight based on the BMI chart, not based on your body composition. So they're not accurate, but they're not inaccurate. They would, I wouldn't take it as like the truth. I would have a DEXA body scan. That's what I had a few months ago. Life-changing. It tells you your bone mass, your fat, your lean muscle. You can do it at any radiology place. Just Google DEXA, D-E-X-A in your area. And I would recommend doing that. And then use your scale as a backup. You need the accurate info, which is a DEXA scan. And then you can see you trend down on the scale. That's great. But just remember, it's not 100% accurate. Does insurance cover those, the DEXA scan? Robin's um, saying she does regular DEXA scans. Yes, some do. Uh, mine did not. I paid out of my pocket. And I, I want to say it was $90. It was nothing. It, it was worth every penny because... I was like, yes, I have a lot of lean muscle, exactly what I wanted that thing to tell me. So it was worth every single penny. And then you can have another one six months or a year later and see your progress. So it's just a motivation tool as well. And as you get older, you need to know your bone density. So my mom has osteoporosis. So that was important to me to also know that my bone density was good and mine is excellent. So that also will tell you that. So it's a good anti-aging health thing as well. So ask your insurance if they'll cover it. If not, it's not hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's, it's affordable. That is good to know. Um, how do you take measurements for comparison? So I wear the same sports bra and same underwear for my measurements and my photos, because I really want to see, and, and people are like, well, can I wear shorts and a t-shirt? No, you can't, because then you can't see, like, you want to see your abdomen. You want to see your back. You want to see your booty. Like you want to see all of that. So I would wear a somewhat revealing bra, bra or sports bra. And I would wear my preference with my clients is for them to wear a thong underwear. So we want to see their you know, their glute muscles grow. So I would wear the same bra, same underwear, because I'll tell you bras, your measurements can change by an inch 
with a different bra. So we're the same ones when you take your photos and your measurements. Mine actually sit in my desk drawer because I do my photos every week and I do my measurements once a month. So we're the same whatever for all of that. So you can really can put those together and go, wow, look at the difference in my body. And nobody else has to see them if you're self-conscious, so, but I will tell you, it's, you may want no to put them out there. Them. I set my camera up. I set my phone on a timer and I take my own pictures. So, I mean, no one has to see them. No, you don't have to put it on in front of anybody. You can take your own measurements because it's just those three measurements. So it's very easy to take them by yourself. So if you're self-conscious, I get it. I totally get it. No one has to see any of that. It looks like somebody has said that they, she gets her DEXA scans for 65 to 75 on special. So that's pretty awesome. awesome some places. That's awesome. Yes. yes. Research. Good for you guys um, for doing those. Aubrey says, I am pre-op surgery scheduled 4.30. I still have days where I doubt myself and wonder if surgery is the right choice. What would you say to someone who asks, why should I still do surgery if I could lose weight without it like you did? Mm -hmm. Or maybe the better question is, are you glad that you lost weight the way you did? Or do you wish you had also done surgery? So it's a I loaded think, question there. Yeah, no, that's fine. I think it is different for everybody, right? It's a personal decision. What you have to know about bariatric surgery, which I'm sure if you have a good doctor, they've explained this to you, it's going to change your life forever, right? And that's where people get caught up. They're like, well, I don't know that I want to alter my body forever. And if you're okay altering your body forever, if you have health conditions, if you are hundreds of pounds overweight, I highly recommend bariatric surgery because it's going to help eliminate a lot of those health conditions a lot faster. And the thing is, is it's only a tool, right? It's if you don't use the tool and maintain a healthy lifestyle, you're going to gain your weight back anyway, same as if you did it without bariatric surgery. So if you have health concerns, or I don't want to say lose weight fast, because again, it's just a tool. And like you said, Brenda, there's a lot of regain. Most people regain a portion of their weight back. So you're in the same boat as someone who doesn't have bariatric surgery. So you really have to decide how, what are my health consequences? And am I able to use this as a tool and still change my life like I would if I didn't have bariatric surgery? Because bariatric surgery or not, you're going to gain all your weight back if you do all the things you did before. So again, it's just a tool for you. And it's really, truly a personal decision. And I have clients who have went through the whole pre-op and said, I changed my mind. I don't want to do it. I have one client. She was actually, she's lost 110 pounds in little over a year with me with macros and calories. And her doctor was pushing bariatric surgery. And she said, you know what, I'm going to try it on my own. And here we are. And that's not always the case for everybody, but you have to, you know, ask yourself and figure out if you want to alter your body forever, because it's exactly what you do with, with bariatric. But I will tell you that it is an excellent choice for a lot of people. And it's not the easy way out. Don't ever let anybody tell you that. It's not because either way, whether you have surgery is just, just one more tool. It's mm -hmm. just one more tool. So mm -hmm. regardless, you're still going to have to do the things that you do, like still going to have to do some lifestyle changes. So I agree with that. Yep. Um, we have somebody, let's see, who says, what's the best way to lose subcutaneous fat? So subcutaneous fat is the fat that's under the surface of your skin. Visceral fat is the fat around your organs. So really, truly visceral fat is your concern. That's the dangerous fat. And again, a DEXA body scan will tell you how much visceral fat you have. So subcutaneous fat is the fat that comes off by being in a calorie deficit. And so your visceral fat will also decrease. But I wouldn't be concerned about the subcutaneous fat as much as I would be about the fat around your organs, because that's truly the dangerous fat. And you can't spot fat reduce. It's just going to come off where it wants to come off. You can't say, I'm going to lose all the fat in my belly. It doesn't work that way. It just comes off where it's going to come off. So I would focus more on the health related fat than the subcutaneous fat. And really you're doing the same things for both of them, right? Correct. Pretty much. Correct. I mean, yeah, there's not like, I'm, I'm going to work on my subcutaneous no. fat today. And then tomorrow, no. okay, today's the day for visceral fat. No, <laughs> you just lose fat overall. Your goal is fat loss overall. And that will come off of both of those areas, right? It'll come off equally in both areas. A absolutely. Great question. I mean, That's um, a great question. we have, yeah, Robin says I'm, I'm at goal and maintenance. So I, so I could have you calculate my macros calories for that for me, question mark, the yes. quick email route. Yes. So if you're at maintenance, then have your macros and calories done for maintenance. 
And then if you decide to embark on a fitness journey and you're like, you know what, I'm at maintenance, but I want to build muscle, then we can redo them for body recomposition. That's what that's called. And then if you decide that you, maybe if you had bariatric surgery and your weight is too low, right? Maybe you're like, you know, I lost too much weight. I'm just skinny fat. We can calculate you to bulk you a little bit, to have you gain a little bit of weight, but not as fat as muscle. So there's a lot of different calculations we can do. That's why you have them redone because your journey changes throughout the process. So you need to have those redone for where stage you're at right now in your journey. Gotcha. Um, somebody is talking about the DEXA scan and um, Robin, who quoted the, the low prices, the 65 to 75, 75 says, if you're in the Atlanta area, it's live lean RX. Perfect. And then, um, yes. And then Connie says, I thought a DEXA scan measures bone density. Does it do muscle mass? Yes, it does lean muscle, muscle mass, bone density, visceral fat, subcutaneous fat, and it's going to tell you your body fat percentage. Again, that is based on the BMI chart. So we don't really care about that. We care more about how much lean muscle we have and how much visceral fat we have. So my visceral fat was extremely low, which is exactly, that's the goal, right? My visceral fat should be extremely low. When you get to maintenance, if you're healthy, your visceral fat will decrease naturally. Do you have to have a doctor's order for that? Nope. Jen? nope. No. But I will tell you the place I went to, I paid out of my pocket within a few days, they, a physician actually called me to go over my results because the DEXA scan, the results are really convoluted. If you're not a doctor, you're not going to understand them all. So my place actually offered me a free consult. So he called me and we spent about 20 minutes on the phone and he explained everything to me from my, that's how I knew exactly what my, where I was measuring. And I said, is there anything you would recommend that I work on? He said, just keep doing what you're doing. Cause I'm impressed with how much lean muscle you have. He's like, I'd like to see you after your weight loss. It'd be interesting to see what you look like weighing as much as you do, but having as much lean muscle as you have. And that's why we don't care about the BMI chart and the scale, right? It's the other pieces that matter. Okay. And Sharon says, if you change nothing, nothing changes. And honestly, that yes. is, it's right on point because sometimes it's, I feel like sometimes people just don't realize too, like, what is it going to be six months down the road or a year down the road? Sometimes we look at ourselves day to day and it's hard to see those really minute changes. But when you start building muscle and six, six months from now or a year from now, what is your body going to look like and yeah. how is your journey going to be different? And, you know, it said bariatric surgery was the best decision for me, especially having Absolutely. an autoimmune disease. It yes. helped me so much. Have not, have not had a flare up for over three years and I got my life back. So Exactly. Just, That's what I mean. It's a personal decision, right? For her, it was the best decision she could have ever made. Had she taken a different route, maybe she wouldn't have her autoimmune issues under control. And it isn't about looking good in a swimsuit or weighing this number on the scale. It's about your overall health. That's what matters. And that's the question you need to say, will bariatric surgery get me healthier faster? If the answer is yes, then that may be the right decision for you. If it's strictly for aesthetic, those are the people I find that don't often change their lifestyle, at least my clients. They're like, oh, I'm skinny now. Right, but you're not necessarily healthy. Skinny doesn't equate to healthy. Just like overweight doesn't equate to unhealthy. So that's it. You know, it's really a personal decision for sure. For sure. And I'm going to take two more questions and then we're going to go into um, a little bit more of, of I'm going to show them your website, your okay, pages perfect. and all of that, because yeah. I feel like they can get some good information there. Yeah. Um, so Arthur says, you mentioned losing 10 pounds of weight takes how much weight off your knees? So for every pound you lose, it's four pounds on your knees. So if he lost 10 pounds, it would take 40 pounds off of his knees. That's major. And most people don't know that. Most people don't know that little fun fact. And it's so, it's so true because after I had lost about 20 pounds, I would climb stairs and be like, oh, my knees don't hurt. You know, and now I have zero knee issues at all because the weight has come off. So your weight does play a big part. And again, that's another reason to have bariatric surgery, right? If you have terrible knees because of your weight, let's get the weight off of you so that you can help that as well. Somebody asked how, so how do you build muscle? I'm super flabby everywhere, but I have a lot of stamina and I walk. Good for you. So you have amazing endurance. That's fantastic. The only way to build muscle is to strength train. And I do also want to say one thing. It's not a race. 
and you don't have to do everything right now. Losing weight is 80 to 90% nutrition. That's why the saying weight loss starts in the kitchen, fitness starts in the gym. That's a hundred percent a true fact. You cannot out-exercise a bad diet. So take baby steps, get your diet under control, then start working on your strength. Like her, if she feels like, listen, my food's under control, but I am just a flabby mess. Now it's time to go and do some strength training to build some lean muscle. And my recommendation, if it's in your budget, would be to hire a personal trainer for a short term. Learn exercises, learn proper food. Form. You can also use apps. Um, I'm actually testing an app right now for my YouTube channel where they give you workouts. So if you subscribe to my channel, you'll see an update here in a couple of weeks. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and it's amazing, but find someone who can help you with form and help you with your body and building lean muscle on your body. Cause right. Every body is different. So it's going to be different workouts for, for each person. Good suggestion. Um, Okay. I know I said two, but we'll take one more. Okay. okay. Uh, it says, I saw on your page, you have recipe eBooks. What type of recipes do you provide? So a lot of the recipes are going to have Weight Watcher points, and they're also going to have the original recipe that I took inspiration from that you can calculate macros from. So it's just going to be breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and desserts. There's four separate eBooks with 20 recipes per eBook. Just to okay, give you perfect. ideas on foods that I eat regularly that have helped me on my, my weight loss journey. And I would recommend if you are a YouTube watcher to subscribe to my channel because I upload five days a week and I do weigh-ins and grocery hauls and what I eat in a day. And you can really see like on my, what I eat in a day, which is what I uploaded today, how I live my life. What am I eating? What am I doing throughout the day? That all is part of my, my YouTube channel. You know what? Let's go there right now. And like, let me show them what those look like. I actually, sorry, I have this um, pulled up, but let me pull up your, so here is Jen's YouTube channel. She yeah, actually so. has two YouTube channels. So mm -hmm. the links, you guys, I posted the links for both of these in your, in the chat boxes. If you're listening to the replay, it'll be in the description. So mm -hmm. Jen, you said that this is one of them, correct? So this is my main channel. So this is the channel that I upload five days a week, all weight loss related content. Um, to subscribe at the top, there's a little button right here, a little black button. You would just hit that and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Okay. And then how about your other channel, which is Jen Clayton so, Nutrition? Yeah. So this is going to be all nutrition related content, so still weight loss related content, but deep diving a little bit more into the nutrition aspect. So if you scroll down a little bit, Brenda, you'll see like sure. some of the videos, they're all about nutrition. So, okay. you know, food noise and how to lose a pound a day. Can you lose a pound a day? Which the answer to that is no, but how to stop dieting, like all of the different just nutrition related content that doesn't necessarily have to do with a weight loss program, but is nutrition based. Okay. Awesome. And then I'm also going to show them your guys, the links for all these again are on your, um, on the links I provided, but Jen's tribe is where you, you talked about having a private group. Yes. Or... So this is a free face. It's free for you to join. And this is my, my Facebook group. So this is all for health. I don't care what diet, if you had surgery, didn't have surgery, it's everybody's welcome. And it's all just health related. So it's a community. Um, there's 27,000 people in this Facebook group. It's very active. This is kind of how you can keep up with me day to day. I do a monthly meal plan that I offer. I do paid challenge groups. If you're looking for accountability, that's the way to go. I do Zoom calls. We do lives. So this is where you can join to have free support. That's from me okay. and my community. And my community is amazing. This is a very positive place. We don't allow any negativity at all. It's a great Facebook group. Yeah. yeah. No negativity. It's all positive. And the, <laughs> everybody's amazing in the group. And you can see Jen here. She's a pretty positive gal. That's yeah, why I love her. I am. <laughs> <laughs> And then here is Jen's website, Jen Clayton Nutrition. Uh, dot com. And this is Jen, Jen, tell us, okay, some of these, these little buttons that they can press for shop now. Tell us about. Some okay. Of so the first one is personalized macros and calories. So if you want to have your macros and calories done, that's the one you would choose where it says mindfulness. Now the middle one is one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you want to have a direct conversation with me, that's where you'll purchase a 30 minute session. The one to the right of that, if you'll notice, it says macro recalculation. So as you lose weight, as your weight loss changes, when you get to maintenance, this is what you will choose. 
for macro recalculation. So you can't use this one the first time. It's when you have your macros redone in the future. And then where it okay. says you can't start a next chapter and do something for yourself, those are packages of coaching. So one of them is 10 sessions. One of them is five sessions. So I actually give you a discount if you buy a coaching package. And then you also can get on my schedule for a set day and time for your sessions rather than waiting for me to have an open space. And then the rest of it is all the eBooks that the other woman was asking about, my breakfast, lunch, dinner, and desserts and snacks eBooks. So this is where you can purchase those. And then at the very, very bottom, this is where you can contact me directly if you have any questions. You can also DM me on Instagram. You can message me in my Facebook group. You can message me on Facebook. And then you can also sign up for emails to kind of stay in the loop. If I offer a deal, you'll get the email saying that there's a deal for the, on the website. And I also am very active in my Facebook group. Sometimes I'll do Facebook group exclusive deals. So that's another benefit of being in my Facebook group. Oh, awesome. And then here's her Instagram. Nice. It's just yeah. Jen underscore Clayton underscore. Mm -hmm. We got so that. Meals, a lot of before and after, a lot of recipes, um, protein shake recipes, just different recipe ideas for you. And then a lot of, you know, transformation type of thing. Like the first picture is me at my heaviest weight versus me almost at my, not quite at my goal weight, but pretty close. So this was me before I lost. Anyway, this is the picture I saw that completely changed my life. So this is the one picture that I said, that's it. I've got to do something. That was the photo. So it does show you kind of what I look like before versus what I look like now so that you can see the transformation. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Kind of crazy. There's huh? another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I do a lot of reels uh, because that's what people like. They like to see this one is interesting because I'm wearing the same clothing. So you can see the difference in my body. And this was before I had my plastic surgery. This was about a year ago, but very different in clothing so that you can see the true transformation. Okay. So cool. I love, the, I love looking at before and after. It, it makes know. it more real. People it can does. see and the differences the and changes. Legit, right? They're not like, oh, for oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> You're like, it's you. awesome. you know, so good to see that too. So I am all, so Jen, any closing points on that before I kind of, I have, I have a special promotion for ProCare. So I got to yeah, share sure. that today. Yeah. But I, love I want you to say if there's any closing points. So one thing I do want to say is that I do attend a lot of the bariatric conferences. So if you see me, please come and say hi um, and introduce yourself. It's so nice to put a face with uh, you know, someone that was here on the podcast. And I am always open. My emails open. My DMs are open on Instagram and Facebook. Please reach out if you have questions. And if you want help, I would love to help you. It brings me a lot of joy to see you succeed. So what, whoever I can help become healthier, that's definitely why I do what I do. So Jen, a couple things here. Do you work with people on GLP-1s like Ozempic? Yes. Um, semi-glutenide, yes. that yep. type of thing. Yes. Okay. And what if you if they get a DEXA scan, would those results be beneficial before getting macros done? No, not really. Um, if anything, you'll be like, oh, look at all the lean muscle I have. I can eat more. I mean, that's really what it is. It's more, it's not going to skew the macros because it is based solely on where you are right now. And we don't take bone density and things like that into account. Remember, that's what the scale measures is mass. So no, it won't affect it when you lose weight or change your exercise. That's what affects it. Or gain gotcha. weight. If you gain weight, you need to have them redone, right? If you if you gain more than <laughs> twenty pounds, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I feel like there's going to be there's people who's already said they've reached out. So I'm yeah, excited please, about I will that. Answer you right away. And by the way, I'm on it. Like I'll get back to you right away. I will answer. Right <laughs> she away. is. Yeah. She is yeah. on it. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Okay. And I'm also going to share it here. I'm going to share. Yes, you are. You're, you're all about it. Okay. Here we go. Um, so I want to just say, so you spoke, ProCare Listen, everybody, everyone who have loved our dye free options, like our calcium and multivitamin soft chews, we're adding dye free to the products we offer. And so I just want to mention this. It's in our new bariatric multivitamin, our fruit punch, the chewable flavor, it is dye free. Sometimes people are just looking for different options like that. So I just wanted to mention that. And then I also want to show you guys here on the ProCare Health website, it's ProCareNow.com. It is, um, we now have a little special offer this month going on. 
Let me see the, the headers here. Well, whoops, the headers will change. I was trying to be a little impatient and try to make it happen faster. So free 30 count bag with a, of chocolate calcium. These are going to be going out. They're seasonal. They last until the end of April, probably likely, maybe a little sooner or later, depending on the weather changes, because we always like to make sure that we're um, getting them out before the weather, the hot weather comes in because they melt. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of trying to get back to that page, but of course it's not letting me, but it'll pull up. Basically what you can do is you just um, add your order in and it should give you a little prompt um, when you get in your shopping cart, when you get to the 125 level. If you have any problems, there's a number at the top of our screen that you can call us. We have a, a, an awesome support team. And also if you've never tried Brocare, we, have a, we offer free samples. You click here and you can get a free sample and ask them to include some chocolate in there with that. Um, also want to just mention these Berry Connected events, guys. We hold these now, um, usually almost on a weekly basis. Um, sometimes it's every two weeks, but typically all of our events each month are put on our Berry Connected page on our website um, under the Berry Connected tab. Here's Jen's event. Her yeah. event will be on replay. <laughs> yes, that's her. Yeah. We'll be on replay for a full week. Um, using the same link. So any of these other ones that we've already had this month, because I think yours is actually the last one this month and um, hers will be, you can click on it and watch the on-demand replay. Like she had a lot of great points. If you want to go back, take notes. Um, we also put all of our events onto, including our support groups, which we just had. And oh my God, you guys, this was incredible. Um, we talked about taming cravings. So a good, a good one to listen to. We put everything on our podcast and our YouTube channel the following Tuesday after the event. So be watching for that. If you subscribe to either of those very connected podcasts on your favorite podcast station or on YouTube, pop on that to show you guys, it's just ProCare health vitamins and supplements. Um, if you subscribe, like Jen said to her channel or subscribe to ProCare, you'll get reminders when, um, new events are added almost all the time. So I'm going to stop sharing and let me just check here. I feel like there was, okay. I felt like there was some more questions, but I don't think there is. I think we're at the end of today. I just appreciate you so much, Jen, for being here yeah, with us. Of course. Yeah. And if, like I said, if you have questions, reach out. I'm happy to help. Yes. Well, thank you. And everybody have a most wonderful day. You guys all take care and Jen, I'll be reaching back out to you too as well. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>